Thank you all for joining me today on Monday, July 13th, as we start our new series. My name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomi Canada. So thank you very much for joining me this afternoon or good morning or evening, wherever you are in the world. Ah, Grandma Craw, hello. It's wonderful to see uh, so many familiar names. And But the, uh, for a lot of you that are new to Jatomi HQ, welcome. I certainly hope you have a fabulous and fun, informative time. Ooh, you may see behind me the clock on the wall. I finally got a battery for it, so it's now working too. I desperately always need to keep track of time. So I will spin this back around. So, ooh, sorry for the light. I got a new light to try to cast more light on the subject. So yes, I am down in my sewing room. So thank you everyone for joining me today in my sewing room. And today we're going to start off this fabulous new series, Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. Now, once again, our fabulous Parts and Notions coordinator, Tanya Denyer, is doing all of our uh, artwork. Oh, hello, and margaret hello. And Tanya was inspired by, uh, depending on your, your age bracket, uh, dare Tanya, dare I reveal to everyone our age bracket, uh, but depending on your age, then you might remember Sesame Street had the pinball countdown, and they counted specifically to 12. Uh, that was always one of my favorite segments when I was a kid growing up in the 70s uh, watching this. Uh, so that was Tanya's inspiration, and when she said that to me, I'm like, oh, of course. Why not? So we're going to do 12 Janome Awesome Accessories. There are, of course, way more, but 12 is a good number. <laughs> so Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. We're starting with number one today, and then we're going to go around to 12. So number one today is our Ribbon Sewing Guide. And once again, Tanya's cute, adorable drawing. Now the Ribbon Sewing Guide is a very cool tool that Janome has had for a number of years now, but again, maybe you're not familiar with it. So the Ribbon Sewing Guide comes in a blister pack like this. And once you remove the plastic, I always encourage everyone, save this part, the cardboard part, because this is where it has the instructions. Now, on the back of the blister pack, always there are instructions, but this one is very unique. And it even says continued on the inside. So my first thought was, oh, it's going to open up like most of the others uh, open like a book, like a hinge. This one opens the other way. It opens like that. Ooh, it's like a treasure chest. And yes, it is like a treasure chest. Look at all those instructions and what I'm most impressed with, diagrams, like accurate diagrams do. So you really can see exactly what they're doing and as well they have a full instructions here. It's wonderful. I love how Janome thinks of everything. Sorry for the glare. I've got all this lighting overhead and around, so hopefully you guys can all see. So, yeah, so lots of instruction, so it's really good. Now, more instruction as well will be on our Genome Global site. Now, I talked uh, a lot in the previous series of A to Z with Genome about the Genome Global site. Now, again, if you're totally new to Genome HQ, you can go back to the Genome HQ YouTube channel, and I have loaded all the previous Instagram lives as videos now on the Genome HQ YouTube channel. So I've created a playlist called A to Z with Janome so you can review all those previous uh, videos and get uh, all the information there as well most of the videos are stored in Instagram on the main uh, Janome HQ Instagram page in the IGTV icon it's the little TV with antenna icon on the main page of the Janome HQ uh, Instagram page, you can go back and review most of those videos there. For some reason, sometimes they didn't save, but again, they're all on YouTube. And I talked again a lot about the Genome Global site. So type in Genome Global site in your browser. And then there's a tab on the left called Genome Bulletins. And here was a bulletin all the way back from 2008. Like that's how long they've had this uh, ribbon sewing attachment. 
uh, but it's ri or this ribbon sewing guide, but again, all that information is still there. So you can print out these bulletins. I love putting them in a red binder. Uh, you know, Janome's uh, color is red. So I save all these bulletins so that way I'm not always going to use this ribbon sewing guide, for example. So that way, when I can go to my shelf and say, oh, I know I've got information about that ribbon sewing guide somewhere, I can refer back to that binder. Uh, so it's a great like built-in reference uh, binder for yourselves. Because, um, you know, I do a lot of my sewing late at night and I can't always, you know, call up the, the dealer, <laughs> uh, you know, at two in the morning. So you can see, oh, I'm going to show you lots today. So yeah, so here is the ribbon sewing guide. It's very cool. And what is uh, really cool about it is almost every single machine will take it. Again, almost. Uh, always check your machine, check with your dealer. Again, check on the instructions on the back of the, um, in the blister pack and in the uh, Janome bulletin. But if you have a hole somewhere, uh, most of us have the holes in our needle plate. Oh, from Florida. Oh, you must be very, very warm there. And from Humble, Texas. Yes, we finally cooled down here a little bit uh, because of all the rain that we've had uh, lately, but I'm loving this weather, so I don't mind it at all. So, so long as you have a hole somewhere, either on your needle plate or there may be a hole in the bed of your machine somewhere out here, then you're able to use this guide. It really does not matter if it's a 9mm, a 7mm, or a 5mm. Amen to that. <laughs> so again, virtually every machine can use this so long as you have a, uh, a little screw hole somewhere, either in your needle plate or in the bed of the machine, you're able to use this ribbon sewing guide. And again, Janome always thinks of everything. So there are two uh, little kind of adapters this one is slightly more narrow. This little uh, pad, it's like a rubbery pad, is slightly uh, more uh, thin. And then this screw as well isn't as long as that one. You'll see the big difference. And then this rubbery pad here uh, to the right is thicker than the rubbery pad on the left. So if you have a and it even says here one and two. <laughs> it's wonderful. So if you have a hole in your needle plate, you'll use guide number one or slot number one here, and you'll use the thinner pad with the shorter screw. And again, all these instructions are in the blister pack and as well, um, little tips and tricks are in the uh, bulletins. Uh, but yeah, so if you have a, a screw hole out here in the bed of your machine, you'll use guide number two here, and you'll use the thicker rubbery pad, and you'll use the longer screw to attach it. So again, it's really simple. I'm just going to move those out of the way because I have um, guide number one. So there is my needle hole. So I'm going to just scoot that under. And I just kind of feel around, oh, there's the screw hole. Now you want to, oh, before I attach that then, you want to, there's a big, long, oh, maybe I'll turn this. Uh, same attachment for both 7mm and 9mm. Yes, Sandra, so long as your machine has that uh, hole in the needle plate or the hole in the bed of the machine, you can use this attachment. It doesn't matter what the millimeter width is here in the machine. If it's a nine, a seven, or a five, they'll all use this guide. Uh, hello, everyone. I see lots of people are jumping on. Thank you so much for joining me today. So this is your central uh, needle marked, this red line here. And then this guide is adjustable. These little thumb screws can loosen, oops, <laughs> can loosen, and then you can move that guide in and out. So you can use strips up to one uh, inch wide, and then, uh, or again, even really narrow, like quarter inch, it's up to you. Uh, I'm not always sure of millimeters, I must admit. I, uh, I work in uh, inches primarily. Uh, but yeah, so that center needle mark, that red mark, is you're going to put in the center needle, and you can see on your bobbin cover, 
Maybe I'll put my hand behind it so you can see a little better. Uh, that would be right along with those guys. That's your center, center needle position on your bobbin cover. So that big red guide on your uh, ribbon sewing guide is going to be in line with those lines there. Now, if it's a little easier for you to see, uh, take some green painter's tape or even the blue painter's tape, whatever you may have, and just put it up against those uh, little dashes. So then you'll be able to see a little better. And then that uh, tape you would run along like the, the front bed of your machine. So then you could line up that red guide of your ribbon sewing guide a little easier. It just helps uh, like focus your eyes a little more. Or this would be a good opportunity to use your ooh, optic magnifiers. Now today I'm working on the Continental M7 here and there's a special set of optic magnifiers uh, just for the Continental M7. So make sure you read the packaging where it says for the Continental M7. It takes its own optic magnifiers uh, because of this longer bar. It needed to be longer so it could swing around to the front of the machine. Uh, the other set of optic magnifiers uh, will work with, um, like they came with my Memorycraft 15,000, for example, and they'll work with like the, the QDC machines, some of them. And um, so just to make sure, check with your Genome dealer as always, that you get the correct uh, attachments and feet for your machines. Hello, everyone. So yes, I'm going to attach this guide now. And again, I just kind of feel around for where that screw hole is. And if it's easier, I'm just going to stand up a little bit. Uh, it's easier for me to then see that guide. So there we go. And then as always, my trusty little screwdriver that comes with the machine, you can tighten that up so it's not going anywhere. And then again, these thumb screws can move. So that is good. So when it comes to now, this um, guide is going to help you to embellish, to uh, create your own ribbon. You're going to embellish your ribbon first, and then you're going to remove this guide and then sew on your ribbon to your project uh, in another step. This guide here is just to make the, the ribbon itself. But it's really fun because you can totally use a variety of ribbons that, again, that you get from the store. Now, because I love to recycle and I don't like to waste anything, you know some of those chocolates, fancy chocolates, come with this beautiful ribbon. And again, I don't want to waste it, so why not use the back side? It, it's not as uh, shiny as the front side, but still, it's a perfectly good surface, so I can embellish a a ribbon that we've already purchased, or I love working with stripes. So how about uh, cutting up the stripes into various width and then you can play with the stripes as I did here. And again, you can use all the decorative stitches built into your machines. When people say, oh, I've got so many decorative stitches, I don't know what to do with them. This is a perfect opportunity to experiment with your decorative stitches. These are from the, the play category saying happy with the little sewing machine icon and then sewing. So again, you um, choose whichever is built into your machine. And uh, you'll see here, I've got some water soluble stabilizer. And then here I've got some uh, tearaway stabilizer under my strip. And again, I'm playing with the Stitch Sweet Love, the uh, stitches already built into the machine. Oh, hello, Mitzi. Hello, hello. So be it clothier. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me. So a very, very fun. This, again, um, the stitches already built into the machine. I was using the um, hand stitch style machines that are built, or stitches that are built into the M7. So how fun is that? So you can really play around and whatever kind of look that you want. And then, of course, oh, I call it going down the rabbit hole. As you get uh, excited about starting these new techniques and with a new foot, you just keep thinking one idea after another after another. And this is why I don't sleep well at night. I was thinking, ooh, how fun it would be 
here is my big like one inch wide strip and then I prepared this other smaller strip that's maybe three eighths of an inch whatever uh, and I fold it under those raw edges to make this other strip it could be a bias whichever and then using the twin needle and the ribbons and sequins foot which I demoed in the A to Z with Janome series I could use that presser foot to build up my ribbon so instead of just one layer with just one ribbon I stacked on another smaller ribbon and then again using a twin needle can do some more decorative elements so it's like oh my gosh there's so much you can do no no end to the creativity uh, yes, yeah, Sandra, in your presser foot workbook, they do in the specialty presser foot addendum that comes with your uh, presser foot workbook. It's a perfect time. I don't want to make anyone sick moving the camera, but this is a perfect time. Thank you for bringing it up. Your Janome presser foot workbook available from your Janome dealer is an excellent resource of all, a lot of, I won't say all, because Janome has so many presser feet. It's amazing, and attachments and accessories, but there's a lot of presser feet included in this book. A lot of the um, feet, like the automatic uh, buttonhole foot and the over edge foot, for example, uh, come with a lot of machines, but there's also an addendum that you can purchase. It's called the specialty presser foot uh, addendum. Then that goes through a lot of the specialty presser feet that I demoed during the previous uh, series, the A to Z with Janome series, like the applique foot and the uh, sequence and ribbon foot, uh, which I'll show again in just a minute. So, and this ribbon sewing guide is in that specialty presser foot addendum. So yes, it is definitely good to pick that up because it's like little exercises on how to get the most from these feet, little tips and tricks. So yes, there's a lot you can do with this guide. I'll keep going around. Ooh, wake up my machine there. So the instructions say uh, to use some decorative threads because yes, when you're going to make your own ribbon and again, you want to have something fun to play with, that why not use some of your beautiful decorative threads. Now, Janome is a distributor of like iris thread I use for embroidery, beautiful, bright colors. So check with your Janome dealers. They might have some Irish thread or maybe they stock our Madeira thread. This is the Polynino poly neon <laughs> embroidery thread again very beautiful now also madeira has the uh, katana thread which i love it is a uh, multi-color thread and of course i left that sample box down in the office uh, but next week i'm going to be back in the office uh, so back in the classroom so i will have that madeira multi-color thread is very beautiful to use too so again check with your janome dealer what threads they have or as well janome uh, regular polyester embroidery thread again very beautiful so any of those are great to use or even experiment maybe try a, a thicker weight of thread depending on your decorative uh, stitches that you're going to do that may be cool to try uh, needles they recommend um, again using your blue tip size 11 has a slight ball point uh, these are the needles uh, that I use most for embroidery but again depending on your fabric and your thickness of your fabric and thickness of your thread maybe try the uh, Janome red tip size 14 needles have a nice sharp point so they would be great and I love this little starter pack. It comes with some of our machines, uh, like the Continental M7, for example, it came with it. But it's like a little starter pack, again, available from your, oops, sorry about that, <laughs> available from your dealer. Uh, so there is a, a red tip, which is a size 14. There is a purple tip, which is also a size 14, that has a, a little flared cobra head, as we call it. And that is great to eliminate skip stitches. And then it's got two uh, blue tips, size 11, again, slight ballpoint needles there. And then it's got this great two millimeter wide twin needle, but uh, perhaps in, in separate packages from your dealer, you could get various widths of twin needles. They come, I believe the widest is up to a six millimeter. So you can really experiment with your twin needle to do something like this. 
I used, again, the two millimeter wide and I was uh, playing around with spacing. But if you had a, a six millimeter wide one, uh, again, how cool is that? So there's a lot you can do. Uh, Sandra, yes, I think everyone should order, ultimately, I think everybody should order the Presser Foot Workbook, because even I am so amazed. When I go back to it and refer to it, I'm like, oh, there's so many little tips and tricks to learn, you know, just when you think you know it all and everything, there, there's always more. So it's a really good reference. And then again, especially if you're sewing alone, you know, late at night, uh, you can't always uh, reach out to someone in person. So it's nice having the um, the presser foot workbook and, and the bulletins, you know, at home that you can refer to at any time. Um, yes, so here, definitely what you want to use with your ribbon or again if you cut up your own fabric and make your own you definitely need to stabilize it somehow uh, especially with all these dense uh, decorative stitches so this ribbon for example really does not look wonderful because I did not stabilize it at all. Now this is a grow grain ribbon so yes it's a thicker ribbon to begin with but yes I, I backed it with some tearaway stabilizer and that looks way better. Now of course the tearaway stabilizer, uh, for those of you who joined me for A to Z with Janome, you already know what I'm going to say. The stabilizer came of course from our Madeira starter set. It is a great uh, package of stabilizer. Again, many different kinds of um, tearaway stabilizer. The Avalon is the water soluble stabilizer. And then there's some uh, heat uh, iron on ones as well. So it's a great starter pack and, and the sheets are quite big. So it's, it really allows you to experiment and find your favorites. And it comes with this cute book uh, as well that uh, explains all the stabilizers and when you would use them and, and why. So whenever I'm embroidering is mainly why I use those stabilizers. But again, I save the cutoffs for everything. So then this was the perfect opportunity to use up some of those scraps. So what I have done is uh, cut up a bunch in various uh, widths because again you can use up to an inch for your ribbon sewing guide so I've cut them at various widths to then put under the ribbons or what makes it even easier I was thinking oh some of those really skinny ribbons are kind of fiddly so what I instead did was take a bigger piece of stabilizer and I can just slide that right under the guide and then I can put my ribbon through the guide up here and do my stitching. So that way I don't have to take the time to cut up my stabilizer if I have a bigger um, pack as well, or a bigger piece. Uh, oh, would to real magic work? Well, funny you mention that. Look, I love to real magic. And again, I've mentioned that a couple of times on Janome A to Z. Now, if I use it primarily for embroidery, if you have our artistic edge cutter, uh, you probably already know about to real magic. And if you don't, you definitely should pick it up. It is fabulous to really stiffen your fabric. It works way better. You'll use way less of it than your average spray starch or spray starch alternative. A little to real magic goes a long way. And I love it for stiffening this ribbon because maybe you don't want to take the time to either uh, rip off a uh, tearaway stabilizer, especially if you're using some really intricate decorative stitches. Or now, water soluble, you know, yes, it's great to experiment with that too. And that's a little easier to remove. Uh, the bigger pieces I just cut off. And then I love using these uh, curved. These just happen to say Janome. So I always say, oh, they work better <laughs> if they say Janome. But these uh, scissors are curved and I use them for embroidery. So I can get right down and trim the threads flush with the embroidery and I know I'm not going to cut into the fabric. So I like using them here to like cut off the the majority of my water soluble stabilizer so again i don't have to worry about cutting into that fabric and after i remove 
the bigger chunks of stabilizer, then I would immerse this in water and it would completely dissolve and leave my stitching intact and beautiful. So that works well, but why I love this to Real Magic is I don't really need to use those secondary stabilizers. This fabric is just regular fabric and again, kind of limp and normal, whatever. But this is treated with To Real Magic and it has become almost like paper. It really is cool. It works beautifully. And again, a little goes a long way. For something like this strip of fabric, I would put this in a uh, like plastic bag and I would spray the To Real Magic to get your fabric all saturated. Then um, I have a little hanger over my laundry sink actually, and I hang up my strips over the laundry sink. So if there's any extra, it'll just drip into the sink. And then after it is dry, then I press it and it's nice and stiff. So it really works well. And that way, again, I don't have to. In fact, that's what I did with this strip here. And again, how beautiful. There's no puckering whatsoever. And again, I didn't have to worry about removing any kind of stabilizer uh, from the back. So I really, really recommend To Real Magic. And again, I find I use it for so many purposes now. It really works great. Now, I did this little experiment uh, as well. When you do have some water soluble stabilizer, just as a, as a little tip and you end up with all these little bits and bobs left over, I've got this little box, uh, there used to be chocolates in it. And after all the chocolates were gone, I keep this by my uh, pressing table and any little scraps of water soluble stabilizer, I just keep in this little box. And then eventually what I do is I fill up a little spray bottle with hot water and again, I've marked it water soluble stabilizer. So I never mix it up with my regular uh, spray bottle that's on my pressing table. Uh, so I put the water soluble stabilizer scraps in here with some hot water and then I shake it up and I use this as a type of spray starch. Uh, and especially when, you know, some of those spray starch alternatives, um, I don't have enough of them <laughs> basically uh, when I'm when I'm out, you know, because again, I'm sewing all the time and sewing late at night. So if I run out of that, that spray starch alternative, this is when I use my, my own homemade sort of water soluble stabilizer uh, spray on. Um, you'll see this is regular fabric, totally untreated. And you see by the folds there, fine. But then this has been treated with that water soluble stabilizer dissolved in my spray bottle. So it's definitely added more body to the fabric. So again, this I use when I run out of that other uh, spray starch, if I need to, um, if I'm pressing my fabric before I start cutting it up for a quilt, let's say, uh, then I like to spray my fabric with this. But when I'm doing my ribbon sewing guide to Real Magic, I'm always going to default to because then look at those, like just look at the life <laughs> of that ribbon. Uh, you would never be able to recreate those results with this water soluble stabilizer spray. Uh, you would have to spray it over and over and over and over again and let it dry and iron it and spray it again and iron it. And it's like, oh, it's too much trouble. Instead, just go with the Real Magic. Uh, yes, this video will be safe for later. So yes, if you have any um, technical difficulties or anything, either sign out of the Instagram and go back in, or then yes, this will save to the IGTV icon on the Janome HQ Instagram page. And then later I will load it as a video onto the um, Janome HQ YouTube channel. So yes, you'll be able to see it uh, there. So yes, to real magic will really be wonderful. Uh, I'm later gonna cut up all these stripes to use in my sample. I'm gonna do another sampler quilt for this uh, series, but I don't have any more of Tamara Kate's um, alphabet fabric. <laughs> so I'm going to improvise. Uh, just, yeah, very briefly, time is going by so quick. Again, you can really experiment. There I did a skinny strip and I put it on a bigger piece of stabilizer, but again, um, slightly bigger piece. But again, instead, I think I'm going to put, a again, a big piece of stabilizer like that under the guide and then I'll stitch 
uh, on top of that and then remove it later, it'll, it'll be easier. Or again, I'm going to use my to real magic instead and then I won't have to use that stabilizer at all. But yes, you can cut up your strips any width up to an inch. Then I was again playing around with experimenting by putting on this other skinnier ribbon on top of this this bigger piece and again using my twin needle or you could do a decorative stitch as well and then i thought about oh folding under the the raw edges if you wanted to to make it narrow and more clean finish and then this you could do a uh, applique stitch or again just a, a straight row of stitching to affix this to any project uh, or again a bigger strip here that maybe if you wanted to fold under those raw edges and have your skinnier strip here and then do a decorative stitch down the middle and that would uh, anchor those raw edges. If you used a twin needle, this would be a great for a belt loop and your ribbon sewing guide again keeps it all perfectly in line. So that would be cool. Or again, this could become a draw cord, put a bodkin on one end and feed it around a, a waistband. This could become a draw cord. Or then I was playing around with some of the fun, again, decorative stitches and the editing capabilities of the machine, depending on your machine. And then you flip, uh, mirror the stitches, flip them around. Or then this, I created my name in Stitch Composer, but you could just as well easily use the fonts that are built into your machine and create a label, in this case, just my name of Mike, and I just stitched that over and over again. And then here, uh, included in a number of our machines, we've got these cute little like wash labels that's like hand wash and 60 degree and no dry and no iron. So these would be cute little uh, tags to put in uh, clothing or again on a, on a quilt if you're giving a gift to somebody, then there's some washing instructions or again include their name. Uh, when my grandmother was at her retirement home before she passed away, we had to put her name in all of her clothing, you know, for the, for the laundry service. So this would be a great time to use again, that ribbon sewing guide, and you could make your own, um, like name labels, name tags, and then, you know, trim them off and then sew them in the garment later. So that was a really good use for it. Or again, to it's just so fun to play with all the decorative stitches built into your machine. Again, this was treated with to real magic. No other stabilizer needed. It worked out so well. Built, uh, use the built-in stitches to your machine. Now, this is a, a one of the overcast stitches, particularly for like really ravelly fabric. But how cool it looks, like a decorative stitch. You put some beautiful uh, embroidery thread. And then this, I was thinking, again, you can use a wider strip and then after you've embellished the strip, then take it to your rotary cutter and, and, you know, cut down your strip then if you wanted to, to make it smaller. But it's nice sometimes to start with a bigger strip that it's not so fiddly. It's easier to work with and then you can trim it down later. And again, that to real magic makes it so nice and stiff, then uh, it turns out perfect every time. Ooh, now, before I move, then I was like, this is where, again, I was thinking, if we take our one strip of fabric, like this bottom blue, and then we use our ribbon sewing guide foot, uh, or the, the ribbons and sequins foot that I demoed uh, in the A to Z series, and then, again, I would put, ooh, sorry for moving that. Let me get a new piece of fabric. So if I have then my strip of fabric goes under this plastic guide here. So again, it, that's what keeps it in line. And then I've got these uh, little dials that again, I can move out wider or move in more narrow. And that's what's going to help keep this all lined up beautifully with the foot. Uh, yes, to real magic will wash out afterwards. That's one of the secrets. Oh, hello, Evelyn. That's one of the secrets of to real magic. Oh, sorry, I flipped the camera. <laughs> one of the secrets of uh, to real magic is that yes, it really stiffens your fabric, but it completely washes away afterward, and it's as if you've never known it was there. So after I uh, tighten those in, and again, my my strip of fabric is under this clear guide, then. I would put on, if I wanted to layer my strips, I could put on the ribbon sewing or the uh, ribbons and sequins foot 
and then put uh, my secondary ribbon through one of these guides. You know, there's four guides on the foot that again, you can go back to review the um, ribbons and sequence foot on the A to Z series at the Genomi HQ. And then this ribbon would first, uh, you know, it would go under like that. So I would have it under this clear guide as well. And then I would feed it into this guide here. And then again, stitch away and how beautiful that would be. It would be so fun. Now I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to use my ooh, AccuFeed Flex foot. That is like our walking foot on steroids. Now you could totally with decorative stitches. Uh, I tried first using the uh, F foot or the F2 foot, the open toe satin stitch foot. And again, these have the little channels on the back. So your decorative stitches feed right through. So they are great choices to use for decorative stitches. Um, I didn't really like the F2 foot because I felt by not having any bar across here, it kind of drew up the fabric a little more uh, that I wanted and it sort of puckered it a little more. So I, I eliminated using the F2 and instead used the regular F foot because it's got that bar across and then help that keep, uh, help the fabric stay a little more uh, flat as it was going up to the needle. But then I was experimenting with the AccuFeed Flex foot because one of the wonderful innovations of the Continental M7 here is I can use the AccuFeed Flex, which again is like having a walking foot on steroids. I can use that with our decorative stitches, which is something we previously couldn't do before. If on other models of machines, if we engaged our AccuFeed Flex by hitting that little icon there, you'll see it has grayed out other stitches that um, by activating the AccuFeed Flex, I couldn't use uh, any stitches that go to the left or to the right. The AccuFeed uh, Flex is again like a walking foot on steroids, so it really only wants to move front and back. It wouldn't let me do any stitches sideways. But now on the Continental M7, I can remove that. Uh, is the F2 available for the 9900? Uh, yes, it would be, absolutely. You can um, go check with your Genomi dealer to get that F2 foot. But yes, they're available in a separate blister pack if they did not come with your machine. Uh, so yes, if I go over here to the functions uh, button with the little lines there, I've got a setting that says manual dual feed setting. So currently it's off, but if I select on, now I've got that AccuFeed Flex with pretty much all of my stitches. And the wonderful thing too about the Continental M7 here, I can adjust, this is my manual dual feed setting. So if I wanted to adjust it, you know, to be a little less or again, a little more, I can now adjust it right on the screen. Whereas machines like the MemoryCraft 15,000 or 9400, 9450, we have to adjust the little, uh, dial that's off to the side of the machine uh, on the Continental M7, I can adjust my AccuFeed Flex uh, ratio uh, directly on the screen. So that's a, a good improvement as well. In fact, the Continental M7 here has its own AccuFeed Flex motor. So that's why it's able to separate doing AccuFeed Flex and being able to incorporate that now with your decorative stitches. So I'm going to um, select that. So again, now pretty much, you know, there's one stitch I can't use and then uh, it won't allow us to sew on a button using the AccuFeed Flex foot, but that's fine. I'm not interested in that. Instead, I'm going up to this little icon here is our hand stitch style is a category, a new category on the Continental M7. And I can scroll through, I've got four pages, or I can just go up to the top here and select that. These are all my hand stitch styles, uh, stitches. Now they look very familiar. They might already be in your machine, but these are like a, the decorative stitches, but they're a little tweaked. They're a little um, more, again, artsy, a little more uh, as if done by hand. So they're not so perfect. So I really think that's cute. So I'm going to select our um, spool of thread, for example, and I will now stitch that out. 
Love your M7. Yes, totally. I love the Continental M7. It is amazing. So yes, I can. I want to leave a little bit of extra uh, fabric behind my foot here. And that will help if, again, you wanted to attach this like into a garment or make a label out of it. And now away I go. So by having that manual dual feed uh, option, I'm able to take advantage of the AccuFeed Flex. So I've got upper feed dogs as well as lower feed dogs. Now this is a good time as well to uh, adjust your speed control. You don't necessarily have to go 1300 stitches a minute like the Continental M7 does. So you can go down anytime I do decorative stitches. Uh, same with I'm embroidering. I don't necessarily want to go as fast as it can. Now, as you're stitching along, now if you notice that depending on your stitch, you know, if, as this goes maybe back and forth, back and forth, and this ribbon like way right up here may start buckling, again, always just stop your machine and smooth it down a little bit before it gets to the foot. That's totally fine. You know, nothing tragic is going to happen by any means. Maybe I can speed it up a little more. But it's really, really fun. And again, this I could have lined up my strip. I see uh, it's not quite centered. I could have lined it up a little bit better. But for you know time's sake, again, I'm always rushing. <laughs> uh, but yes, again, and you just let it go. And you just let it do its thing. It really, really works well. It's so cool. And then after I'm done... And then again, by using that to real magic, look how perfect that is. There is no buckling. There's no anything. It's gorgeous. And that way I don't have to take the time and remove any stabilizer afterwards. So now I would take this and take off my ribbon sewing guide. If I wanted to fold under these raw edges, I could. But again, the wonderful thing about that to real magic is uh, these raw edges, they, they really don't ravel. <laughs> so I could just instead put this ribbon on maybe again with like a blanket stitch or an applique stitch or maybe um, I just want to leave it and do um, straight line stitching, you know, an eighth of an eight, uh, inch away, you know, whichever. But it's really, really cute. So that is your ribbon sewing guide. So yes, thank you everyone for joining me today on our very first Janome's Awesome Accessory Countdown. And today, number one was brought to you by the number one, the Ribbon Sewing Guide. But let me flip this around. Uh, so coming up on Wednesday, then we're going to be doing number two, uh, which is then our um, free motion couching feet, which are very fun. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, Aaron will be at Janome Canada Instagram, or not Aaron, uh, sorry, Amanda will be at Janome Canada uh, Instagram live doing, oh, I think is she doing raw edge applique? So uh, you can check your Janome Life blog uh, in the morning. If you follow Janome Life, you will get the um, schedule of our coming week of Janome HQ Instagram Lives and Janome Canada's Instagram Live. So that comes out every Monday morning if you follow Janome Life, and that way you'll get the schedule for the week. So um, yes, then I'll be back here Wednesday. Celine is Thursday. Oh, she's doing the circular attachment. And then just as a heads up, on Friday this week, I hope you'll forgive me. I won't be here doing an Instagram live on Friday, the, what is that, the 17th? Uh, but I will be here Wednesday. Um, so yes, I will totally see you all then. Have a very fabulous day and enjoy your afternoon. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you all. Thank you so much for joining us on our uh, very first episode of the new series, and I will see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>